Hey guys, Crossflux here with something a bit different. You guys know I love Yu-Gi-Oh! You also probably know that I love Power Rangers. You also also know that that means I love the Super Quant archetype. I mean, I have already made videos on these guys already, so check them out if you haven't yet. Today, I'd like to throw my own ideas into the pile and share with you my custom Super Quant cards. A quick look at the archetype reveals certain patterns that have missing components. So let's briefly go over the nitty gritty within this archetype and see just what I mean. The first thing to note about the Super Quants is that their main deck monsters follow a pattern. Each of them possess a different level and their stats change in a predictable manner. Blue layer is level 3 and has 1200 attack and 2000 defense. Green layer is level 4 and has precisely 400 more attack and 600 less defense. Red layer follows this trend by being level 5 and having 2000 attack and 800 defense. Besides the starting rangers, the other main deck monsters are the same entity and sort of follows its own set of rules. The important thing is that both fairy alphan and white layer are different levels from all the other monsters, being 1 and 7 respectively. This means that we are missing monsters for levels 2 and 6. Not only that, but each ranger also has a unique attribute. Blue is water, green is wind, red is fire, and white is light. So this means that we are conveniently missing both earth and dark. This is a perfect opportunity for me to flex my creative muscles. I introduce to you the next two main deck super quant monsters. When designing each of these cards, I've thought about two things. What fits the theme of being the super quant archetype? And what are things that the archetype is missing that prevents them from being more viable in a competitive scene? Now, I'm not a professional Yu-Gi-Oh player, so my opinions on what is balanced and what they need to be viable probably isn't the most sound logic out there, but I'll do my best to explain my cards and my choices. Please feel free to roast me in the comments about how overpowered and or underpowered my cards are. So I'm going to quickly list off each of my custom cards, so you can see all of them. Then I'll go back over each of them and explain in more detail my thought process behind them. You know what that means. It's morphin' time! Now, what's a ranger without their zord? Well, they're still a ranger, but they probably won't be saving the day. Let's take a quick look at the machines these two monsters will be piloting. Finally, the big boys. Everyone knows that robots are cool, but robots that combine into bigger and better robots are even cooler. These two zords can combine into their own mech, but all six of the attributed zords can combine into the Ultra Zord. These last few cards are spell and trap support to help round out the archetype's weaknesses as well as giving them another win condition. Alright, like I said, let's go in depth with each of these cards and explain what I was going for. First up, the main deck monsters. These two are meant to represent the Super Sentai trope of the evil rangers that the good guys usually beat and convince them to join their team. Sort of like the Thunder Ninja Rangers from Power Rangers Ninja Storm. Unfortunately, I couldn't follow the attack and defense pattern that Blue, Green, and Red possessed because the formula sort of breaks at these levels. See, if I were to have the level 2 yellow layer have 400 less attack and 600 more defense, she'd be 800 attack and 2600 defense. Those stats just don't fit a level 2 monster. Likewise, black layer stats would be 2400 attack and 200 defense. Now, these are more in line with the level 6 monster, but I figured if I already had to break the pattern with yellow layer, there was no sense in sticking to it with black. It also fits them aesthetically since they're the evil rangers, i.e. they don't follow the rules. Each ranger also has its own area of play that it specializes in. Blue layer is all about the deck. Both its summon and graveyard effects affect the deck in some way, either by searching a card out from it or shuffling cards back into it. Likewise, green layer is all about the hand. Red layer manipulates the graveyard. So when designing yellow and black, I wanted to affect the other zones of play as well. Yellow is all about the extra deck. On summon, it immediately helps you to get one of your extra deck monsters out without having to rely on the field spell. 
a massive Achilles heel for the archetype at this point. Also, when sent to the graveyard, it can revive itself. This doesn't immediately feel like an effect about the extra deck, but consider this. Reviving itself gives you the material you need to help Ixyz summon. Not only that, but say Yellow Lair was attached as material to something. The Ixyz monster is destroyed during your opponent's turn, so Yellow is sent to the grave, which now immediately revives itself, thus triggering its on summon effect to immediately bring out another Ixyz monster. Black Lair is all about the Banish Zone. Now, normally I don't like cards that interact with the Banish Zone. I feel that it's poor design from a mechanical standpoint. The Banish Zone should be just that. Banished, as in no longer usable in the duel. We have a graveyard for cards that have been used, but have the possibility of returning to play again. But anyways, that's a rant for another day. I feel black should manipulate it because the Banish Zone is another area of play, at least in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! And I may be a bit of a hypocrite? Anyways, on Summon, he can essentially copy another Super Quant's Summon ability. This lets you double dip on effects that are normally once per turn. It's sort of like how Witchcrafter Jenny can let you double up on your Witchcrafter spell effects. Also, Black's Summon ability feeds into his graveyard effect by letting you add back the card that you banished earlier. Not only that, but it also helps the deck have some recurring potential against other strategies that focus on banishing cards, something the Super Quants currently struggle with. Also, you may notice some other synergies between Black Lair and the Spell and Trap cards that I've created, but let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Up till now, I've only discussed the patterns that the main deck Super Quant monsters have shared, but their Zords also share some similarities that are worth pointing out. Grand Pulse, the rank 3 mech beast, has 1800 attack and 2800 defense. Ereboros, the rank 4, has 400 attack more and 400 defense less. Magna Liger, the rank 5, follows suit, winding up at 2600 attack and 2000 defense. Lusterex, the white layer, is the black sheep of the family, ignoring this pattern altogether. These Xyz monsters all focus on interrupting the opponent by limiting their resources. Grand Pulse can pop back row, Ereboros can set monsters, Magnolire can pop monsters, and Lusterex can negate monsters. Each of their effects are quick if they have the right pilot, making them far deadlier than they have any right to be. I wanted to throw in a few effects that the individual Zords don't already possess. Thunder Rhino's effect deals with monsters in a slightly different way than the others. These days, monsters are often just as big of a nuisance in the graveyard as they are on the field. This is why Ghost Bell and Dee, Dee Crow are such good hand traps. Abyss Serpent was a bit easy to design. Another form of removal that the Super Quants didn't have access to in their Swiss Army Knife of Extra Deck monsters was Banishing. This also fits with Black Lair's focus on the Banished Zone. I also tacked on the Night Beam effect to make this a more reliable form of back row removal than Grand Pulse, albeit more situational. Likewise, the restriction on face downs does give a bit of synergy between this and Ereboros, as Ereboros can set the monsters that are otherwise problematic. If you've seen Power Rangers, then you know that the extra rangers often have their own Megazord. An iconic example is the Dragon Zord's battle mode. Yellow and black layer zords will combine into a rank 8 Xyz. This is kind of funny, because rank 2 plus rank 6 equals, well, rank 8. As for the name, I went for a similar name to Great Magnus. Since Magnus already means greatness in Latin, I decided to use another name that also means great. The name Maxwell is also tied to electricity, thanks to James Maxwell, so Thunder Rhino's inclusion in the transformation makes more sense. As far as gameplay goes, I wanted to make this a supplementary piece to the Super Quant strategy. As you know, their main win condition is through Great King Magnus, so Great Maxwell will help make summoning Magnus easier. Maxwell is also the easier of the two to summon, even without the field spell, as you can use any two mech beasts. Like with the alternate summon condition of Magnus through Magna Carrier, you're incentivized to cheat Maxwell into play, as it winds up with more Xyz material that way. You want to give Maxwell as much material as possible, so that one, he's stronger, and two, can negate more than once. Speaking of, his negation effect also rewards you for playing him correctly. Since his normal summon condition is any two level 8s, 
he's technically generic for a lot of decks to play. This is why the best version of his negation effect requires you to detach an Xyz monster as material, something most other decks won't be able to accomplish, at least not without jumping through some hoops. Finally, the ultimate combination between every Zord in a Ranger's arsenal is the Ultra Zord. Ultra Magnus is the new win condition for the Super Clans, without necessarily replacing Great Magnus. Still relying on the field spell to cheat itself into play, it has a few more hoops to jump through in order to reach its prime. It has a higher capability for destruction, but yeah, it's hard to get there. So Great Magnus was already a great boss because of his tower's level of protection. The problem is that he's not completely invincible. He can be brought down in battle and can be kaijued. Ultra Magnus serves to remedy some of these problems by being even stronger and immune to tributing and being used as material. This truly makes him an unmovable force, a worthy reward considering how many resources you're giving up into making this thing. I feel that even though he's practically invincible in every sense of the word, he can't completely win a game on his own, so he's not unfair. Plus, if you want to actually use his quick effect and not just have him be a big beat stick, you'll have to be giving up materials, which actively weakens his attack power and end up making him vulnerable to your opponent. It's a nice risk versus reward, I think. Speaking of his quick effect, I modeled it after what an Ultra Zord is supposed to be in the Power Rangers arsenal. The Ultra Zord is their strongest weapon, and often an engine of destruction capable of eliminating giant kaijus. This translates into Yu-Gi-Oh! by being able to slay an opponent's boss monster with minimal effort, removing it straight from the extra deck before it even hits the field. The Super Quants already have a lot of spell and traps in their arsenal, but honestly none of them are that spectacular. Obviously the field spell is mandatory in order to get their win condition, but besides that the only card that most versions of the deck use is the occasional Alphen Spike or Magnus Slayer. So, I wanted their new spells and traps to actually be something you'd use in their deck. Entanglement is meant to be the power play. Being a foolish burial and a monster reborn in one really gives the super quant some gas. To balance this out, you have to revive something other than what you've sent to the grave. This makes it so that the card text doesn't literally read a special summon a super quant from the deck. Also, this isn't just Foolish Burial, as it can also serve as extra Foolish Burial. The reason you might want to do this is, one, to fill your grave with more mech beasts to get you one step closer to forming the Megazord. Also, fun fact, check out Great Magnus' first effect. When sent to the graveyard, revive three mech beasts. So if you decide to pitch a Great Magnus off this, you can get incredible value. Metamorphosis is supposed to represent the rangers morphing into battle. Since the mech beasts have effects to attach pilots to themselves, I thought there should be a way to reverse that process by calling forth one of the rangers, thus triggering their own summon abilities at quick speed. Both of these spells also have a banish from grave effect since that gives them a little extra value, a trend among modern archetype spells and traps. Victory Pose is the new draw power for the deck. Sure, Green Layer lets you draw a card, but it's only a single card, and you need to discard another Super Quant first, so it's not a plus in advantage. Victory Pose does just that, being essentially Pot of Greed, but a conditional one. You need to already have a partial board established. Thus, Victory Pose is more for gathering those last pieces of resources that you need to finish your board, rather than searching for the pieces you need to get going. Finally, the time has come. We've dwindled our foe's resources, and it's time to finish this. Super Quant Finisher is a risky blowout card that can facilitate the end of the duel. You have to detach materials as cost, meaning you open up Great Magnus and Ultra Magnus to removal. But if this succeeds, you can wipe your opponent's board, clearing the way for victory. I made this a trap so that it's also slower, further pushing the idea that this is something you wait for to spring at the right time. 
So what did you guys think? How could I have designed these better? I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. I know that one thing I didn't think about too much during this was how these cards could be splashed into other decks. Also, what mini-engines would now be viable? For example, Emergency Teleport is usually ran at 3 in Super Quants because it can quickly summon out Blue Layer, a key piece to the deck. Anyways, until next time, have a blessed day.